I'm Laura London, and this is the premiere episode of Speaking with Laura. Joining us today for episode one is the founder and CEO of Temenos Dream, John E. Temple Jr. in Livingston, Montana. He earned a degree in history from Columbia University and then spent the next 10 years at Microsoft as a financial analyst and later a product manager, was an instructor at the University of California, Santa Barbara, was on the board of directors for Polyglot Systems, is the co-founder and former chief operating officer of A Place for Mom, and is currently an advisor for Cognition, a computer software company specializing in the fields of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and biotechnology. In 2001, in 2021, he founded Temenos Dream, Inc., a mobile application built to enable millions of people to capture, work with, share, and understand their dreams with a focus on depth psychology and the work of C.G. Jung. Hi, John. Hi, Laura. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you so much for being my first guest here today. And this is an offshoot, kind of a spinoff of Speaking of Jung, um, because I wanted to do episodes with people who were uh, interested in Jung or connected uh, with Jungian psychology in some way, um, but are not Jungian analysts. And we're here today to talk about something that I am very excited about, which is a dream recording app that you created, you developed, and you launched, what, earlier this year? Yeah, about a month ago. About a month ago. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. You have an interest in Jungian psychology, but you are, tell us why you have an interest in Jungian psychology. Um yeah, I, I, you know, I guess I started um, learning about Jung uh, in high school a little bit, but mm -hmm. uh, then it, it with man and his symbols and just really loved it. But then I came back around to it again with the publication of the Red Book, uh, and I got my hands on it in around 2012, and just found it absolutely staggering, just so interesting, fascinating, and really remarkable in that you know, I was aware that he had said that this was the basis of everything else that he did. Yeah. Um, and so that got me really fired up and interested in it. And uh, after reading that and talking to some folks, uh, a good friend of mine had said, hey, you should try and you know work with an Jungian analyst. Mm -hmm. uh, and so around 2015, I started doing that. And, uh, and that has been a really fantastic experience. When you say work with, you mean as an analysis and in analysis. Exactly. As an yeah. analysis and in analysis with uh, a, a Jungian fully trained um, uh, analyst out of LA. And, um, uh, you know, he, and he, he worked with uh, Hilda Kirsch. Um, mm. He studied under James Kirsch. Um, uh, uh, he's, he's been around for a good long while. Uh, so that's been a, an amazing experience. And then through that, I wound up, my, my habit is when I get interested in something, I try and read as much as I can. And so mm -hmm. I wound up reading just tons and tons of Jung, of the complete works, of the things outside the complete works, of the other major acolytes, the Mary Louise von Franz, of Edinger, of Hall, of Hollis, of so many of the folks that you've yeah. talked to as well, um, uh, Lockhart, uh, Johnson, um, Woodman, and uh, you know, through all of that, uh, and then also working in analysis, I just became more and more fascinated with dreams, okay. uh, and uh, keeping track of my own dreams. So, in the course of you know all that time, uh, uh, one of the things that I found is I was always writing my dreams in dream journals and trying to work with them right. in that sense. And you know, as a result, I got about. I don't know, about 70 of these things full of dreams. Do you really? Yeah. Well, which is great, but it's incredibly difficult to find yeah. anything. It's like, yeah. What, you know, I know I've had dreams about that person or that, you know, that symbol or thing before, but where are they? When are they? You know? Um, so I started to think, Hey, there's gotta be a technical solution here. You know, some, a, a tool 
that could be more useful um, and can make it a little bit easier. Plus, you know, one of the things that I found was, um, you know, when I have a dream, I'll often wake up in the middle of the night or early in the morning. And the most important thing for me to catch the dream is to immediately begin thinking about it and immediately right. you know, catch it, record it somehow. Yeah. Um, I used to use just recording apps on the phone, mm -hmm. but then I have to go and transcribe it and, and so forth. And that was just difficult. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm a little lazy. <laughs> and so I'm like, okay, how do we make that easier? So I thought, all right, why don't we build an app that, uh, you know, you can literally roll over to your phone, um, say, hey, Siri, record a dream. It turns on, turns on the recorder, records whatever it is that the dream was. You say, okay, I'm done. Then it transcribes it for you and just saves it and logs it. And then you can come back and work with it later and mm -hmm. kind of really kind of go through all the details of it. Um, and just having that, you know, was going to be kind of a big deal. Um, so we decided to go ahead and build that. And in the process, we wound up adding a lot of other capabilities um, uh, that, that have really kind of been fun uh, in the whole experience. Mm -hmm. You you make it sound so easy. Well, we decided to build it. So you have experience with building apps. It doesn't sound like an easy thing to do. Uh, no. And uh, to be clear, I'm not a software developer. I work with a guy named Ness Croft, who is fantastic. And he's kind of our, our CTO. Um, and he has experience building apps. Okay. I've got experience building software and various platforms and things in the past. Um, but not as a hands-on developer, but instead as kind of a, uh, here's what we need, here's what it has to do, you know, here's how we test it, that kind of thing. Um, and uh, the, the two of us working on this, um, you know, we've been working on it for about a year and a half now. And then prior to that, I was kind of working on it as well and trying to structure what would go into the app and how it would work and what technologies to use and that sort of thing for about another year before that. So mm -hmm. it's, it's been quite a process. So were you keeping track of your dreams before you entered analysis? A little bit, um, but not anywhere near to the degree, um, uh, you know, as after having entered in uh, yeah. analysis. And you uh, realize the importance of, because that's the material we work with are the dreams. And um, uh, I'll just share with you when I was in analysis, this was before email. I mean, before email was popular. And I remember writing my dream and then faxing it to my analyst. <laughs> and right. So, but that there, I, I always thought that there was so much lost between the time I woke up and then the time I sat and wrote my dream down. Yep. That there was just too much got lost. And then my hand can't keep up with my mind. I could speak a lot faster than I could write. And so it, I think that this is revolutionary. I don't know if you called it revolutionary, but I'm calling it revolutionary in all of my promos for this episode because this is brilliant. Um, you, you, so you had the idea that it needs to be easier it, and, and, and we need to be able to catch more information. And this app allows people to do that. So right now it's available for which platforms? Uh, it's just for the iPhone right now. Okay. Um, we're, we're working on getting it up and running for the iPhone. And then as soon as that's up and really, really solid, then we're going to go and, and develop it for Android as well. So you say that it's in the beta phase right now? Yeah, we call it beta um, just because every now and then you'll find a funny bug or something okay. odd and so forth. And until you have thousands of people banging on something okay. all the time, you never know what little things are going to come up. It, it's, it's, it's even as a beta, actually, it's probably a whole lot more stable than most apps. <laughs> it, it's, I was going to say, it seems very stable to me. It doesn't seem like a beta application. So right now it's available in the Apple app store. 
Exactly. And it's free. You can download it for free. And then there are in-app purchases, right? Um, or there will be. Yeah, there will be. Um, right now, and this is a little bit of the beta, um, uh, it's free now um, uh, and it will continue to be free. But okay. we're also building in additional features that we think people will like um, that if you're really die hard and use and work with your dreams all the time, we think that these extra features might be worth something to you. And so there'll be a premium version. And so you can uh, uh, sign up for that if you want or not just use it as a straight, you know, the straight dream log that it is. Um, and so we haven't turned that on yet. We haven't started charging. So right now everybody gets premium for free, you know, just as we get those features out. And then as we kind of get them all locked in, then eventually we'll be like, okay, in a month, we're going to, you know, start charging for the premium stuff. For the premium stuff that's available for free now. Exactly. Right. Exactly. But honestly, we'll just grandfather everybody in who's on board now. Okay, great. Like, right, you, you get premium for free. Who cares? Because right. once you download the app, you create an account. Yes. Exactly. And it, now, is it necessary to create an account? Uh, it isn't. It's one of the things that we wanted to do is make it really, really simple for someone to just be like, okay, I just want to capture my dreams and I don't want to have anything to do with anybody else. I just want them on my phone. Right. And, you know, and I don't want to identify myself. I don't, you know, nothing like that. No problem. That's great. So that's the basic kind of version. You don't have to create a profile. You don't have to give your email. You don't have to do all those things. If you then decide that you want to share a dream with a friend or comment on somebody else's dream, because there is an area uh, where you could do that. You don't have to by any means. Um, but if you want to have any kind of engagement with anyone else, then you actually do have to create uh, um, uh, a profile with an email. Um, and we're, and it, I want to jump in. We're going to show to the listeners, we're going to show you all of this. John's going to demo the product right here on our screen after we give you a little bit of background. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, but the main point being, you can come in and have no identifying anything and use, you know, most of the features of the app. If you want to kind of be social on the app, then we need, we do need an email from you because, you know, if somebody starts getting rude and obnoxious, you got to be able to create say, okay, you need to stop now and be able to shut them off. Right. Um, uh, but other than that, that's about all that we, you know, ask for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is a way, uh, as we said, for you to capture your dream to now you can either record it by voice, you can speak into your phone or you can type it in if you'd like. Exactly. And mm -hmm. one of the things that, that, um, that my developer points out to me, cause he's, couple decades younger than I am, unsurprisingly, <laughs> um, he can type faster than he can speak. Um, wow. And, you know, most of the Gen Z, you know, right. uh, and a lot of millennials right. can type faster than they can speak on mm -hmm. their phones. Being an old guy, <laughs> I like the voice piece, but you can do either one. Yeah. I like the voice piece too. Mm -hmm. So it's, not just for people who are in analysis who need to share their dreams. And, and let's talk about that. So um, as I mentioned before, I would write down my dream in my dream journal or in a notebook on a piece of paper, sometimes on just a scrap of paper um, because I wasn't that organized with it and then get it to my analyst so that she could read it too. Right. So what did I want to say that um, this isn't just for that. This is also, or, oh no, that's what I want to ask you is how do you then share it with your analyst? Sure. Um, any of a few ways. Uh, right now, the way that you would share it with an, with an analyst, um, uh, because the, I, I'm not sure we have, you know, any analysts, we might have one or two on the actual system, but I have okay. no idea really. Yeah. Um, uh, but you can go and say, all right, I want to export this dream to a PDF file. And so it takes your dream, exports the dream, exports your symbols, exports your associations with the symbols, exports your context for the dream and any notes you have and any conversations you've had with anybody else on the system. Mm -hmm. And it puts it in a PDF file and you just download that and you can email that off to anybody you want. Um, your analyst was a great example. And I know people who 
work with their analysts using that feature. Using uh, that feature. Today. Right. That's mm -hmm. so easy that then the dream can just be exported to a file and then that file can just be emailed. So everything exactly. done from the phone. Exactly. And then if your analyst has an account on the system, mm -hmm. you can say share with this person and they can they instantly get it. There's not even email, there's nothing. And then you can comment back and forth inside, you know, inside the app if you want to. Um, uh, or if you want to just talk about it, obviously on your own, that's different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is, um, another way, or I should say the way to search your dreams because you held up your notebook earlier, right? And you said you had about 70 of those. And right. if you want to see, you know, I dreamt about a seal last night, but I think I dreamt about a seal a few years ago. And then you'd have to flip through your notebooks, which is, you're probably impossible. not going to do, yeah, impossible to find, right? right? So this way you can search through all of your dreams for keywords. Yeah. And in fact, the system does it for you so that um, if I put in a dream and I say I had a dream about a seal and a seal shows up, when it uh, when the system goes and says, okay, here are the symbols and so forth. It always then says, oh, and this symbol has occurred in these seven dreams that you've had in the past. And they're dated, they're which dated, I love. And yeah. you can just click in it and go right into that past dream and it's right there for you. Um, so it's, it's nice. I mean, the whole thing is because I, you know, I was frustrated. Yeah. <laughs> I want something that does this. And, uh, and so we've just built something that, that, uh, that, that kind of uh, works and solves some of those problems. You wanted something that did this. You looked, there wasn't anything out there. So you decided right. to make it yourself. Exactly. It, it That's kind of, I, great. I couldn't believe there wasn't anything really yeah. good doing that. And I thought, well, you know what? Let's go ahead and just do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So why don't we now demonstrate and you're going to share your screen here um, in StreamYard. This is new to both of us. So <laughs> I seem to I be the one that. that controls it, right? So you tell me when to bring up your screen and- uh, Go ahead. I think we're ready. Right now? Okay. Yeah. Ah, look at that. It worked. <laughs> it worked. Okay. Excellent. So this is what the app looks like on an iPhone. And I'll let you take it from here. Exactly. So when you start the app out uh, at the beginning, it always starts to- at this part uh, down here around the, um, uh, with my dream. So this is basically your dream log. And so what we're looking at are a bunch of my dreams um, in okay. here that I've put in. Um, and, you know, you can see that they're listed. They have, I, I give my dreams titles, the, the system gives them dates and times. Um, you can kind of look through and see how they've been, whether they've been shared or not. Like this is one I don't share. That's one I've shared with some friends. That's one I've made public to anybody. And so, but anyway, that's Wait a second. Time. Hang on, hang on. So you said this is one you didn't share. So how can you tell that it's one you did not share? Because you see, it's got the, um, it's got a little uh, padlock icon. Okay. Okay. Right there. And so that, that's just at a glance. I can see that I didn't share that one. Okay. Um, so, but, but when you first download the app, you know, the, your main thing is, okay, well, how do I get a dream in here? What do I do? So what I'm going to do is that's what the big red button is for. Um, and if I want to record it, I'll press the big red button down here at the bottom. Um, or, uh, I can press the little plus sign next to it and do a type, you know, type in the dream manually. And this is all before creating a profile. This is all without creating exactly. a profile. You don't have to create a profile. This is just right after you download the dream or okay. download the app. Okay, the app. Okay. okay. You can start with this. So uh, I'm going to go and pretend that, all right, I've just woken up. And you can set it so that, you know, you could say, hey, Siri, record a dream and it'll start immediately. Okay. Uh, for example, so you don't even have to touch the phone. But in this case, I'm going to just press the. the you don't even have to touch the phone. Okay. Right. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's it's kind of fun. You do have to at the end of the dream say, "Okay, now I'm done." Um, okay. But uh, you know, if your phone's sitting on your nightstand, it's you know can be kind of handy. Uh, okay, so if I say, uh, let's say I want to wake up and I just had a dream. I dreamt that I was on the ocean. I was in an Alaskan fishing boat, 
a big seal jumped on board. It walked toward me and it bites me on the thigh very hard. That's an actual dream I had a while back. Okay. And then I pressed stop. I pressed the red button to say stop. And then it immediately flips over and says, okay, here's your dream. And so it is uh, recorded it so I could replay the dream if I wanted to by pressing the, you know, the play button. Okay. And then it also transcribed it for me. So I don't have to do that. Sometimes it gets transcription wrong. Um, and sure. in which case you could go in and edit it. And, uh, uh, and so now I've got my dream. So or you can also add things if you wanted to add some more descriptive words in there, that's exactly. all editable. Right. Um, so I can go in and I can just press edit and I can completely rewrite the dream okay. or expand on it or take, you know, more notes on it if I want to. Um, and then the, the first thing I usually do is say, uh, okay, I'm going to name the dream um, just for my own sake. And I'll just say uh, seal dream. Um, and now it's just kind of logged as a seal dream. And the system has lit up um, words that it thinks you might choose as a symbol. And so you can go in and say, all right, I'm going to click on ocean. And then it adds it as a symbol. I'm going to click on uh, fishing. I'm going to click on boat. Let me just uh, jump in here. So because we can't see your finger tapping oh, on anything. So the words that are in a color, like a pink, those are right. the words that you can tap and add as symbols. Exactly. Um, and that just makes it nice and simple. And then I can, uh, I didn't, can you see my, um, my mouse? Uh, no. Oh, okay. All right. So, uh, yeah. So then you can't see exactly where my fingers are going. Um, but I'll click on seal next. Uh, and then I'll click on bite. But if there's something that I think that I want to add in here, that isn't mm -hmm. uh, one of those things, I can just type it in and say, um, uh, I don't know, let's say um, Alaska. Um, okay. Although skin was, is up there. And then I can go and just add that. So wait, now these are symbols, not associations. Correct. Okay. Exactly. These are things that I think are important symbols in my dream that I want to try and kind of, I want to know what sort of symbolism exists out there for them. I want to record my own associations, okay. any of that sort of thing. Um, so I've got my symbols. Uh, and the next thing I can do is I can either click on the, you know, any of the symbols themselves or click on that little purple tab off to the side that says symbols. And that takes me into the next step, which is I want to record my own personal associations. Um, you know, with oceans, fishing, uh, maybe, you know, I fished with my grandfather as a child. And I can go in and just kind of uh, record that as one of my associations. Or with seal, I can go in and say, they always seem to me like the dogs of the sea. And then I'm just kind of keeping track of my own associations and maybe I don't have associations for the other symbols, but then I just kind of scroll down there and I say, all right, I've captured my associations. Now let's go next and see what sort of uh, symbolism the system has for suggestions or ideas about what to think about with regard to, let's say ocean, for example. Um, ocean is often a, symbol of the unconscious, the collective unconscious uh, in here. And so you can kind of look at this ocean symbolism and take a, and understand that. You can also go in and, and underneath these sort of literary references are quotes from Jung, in this case, out of alchemical studies, uh, where he had something written about oceans or, uh, or the sea. And thank you for including a source. My pet peeve is Jung quotes without a source. Yeah, so mine too, because I always want to know, wait, where was that? I want to yeah. read everything around it before and after it. Uh -huh. uh, exactly. Um, and so in, in here, we're, we, have, we have 
specific sourcing for probably about 95% of them. Every now and then one slips by. Sure. Um, but you can kind of go through and see some of these, um, you know, some pretty lengthy, yeah. uh, you know, quotes about the ocean by Jung and from Jung. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so that can be kind of fun. Um, one thing I'd mentioned before is you can, the system also goes and says, oh, here, your past associations, you see where it says that in there? Um, your past associations, here are all the other dreams that you've had that involve ocean. So under the symbol, it will include a section of on past associations. Exactly. Past dreams that you've had where you've had the same symbol come up. And then you could go in and click on any one of them and go right there um, and go right into that dream. So that's kind of... And they're dated. I love it. Exactly. Um, and then the other thing too is as you go down, you can say, okay, here's fishing. All right. And here's what the symbolism... Uh, the symbolism that the system has for fishing. I might read through this and think, you know, I don't really think that doesn't apply to me. This mm -hmm. doesn't, you know, it's not my thing. So you just sort of press on the symbol, the minus button it says, ah, you right. want to remove that? Yeah, sure. Just Great. toss it away. I'm not going to use that one. Um, you could also go in and, oops, that's pressed the wrong button. You could also go in and edit the symbolism and say, um, you know, I, I think, um, you know, I like the first part of this. So you can make your own notes to yourself about the symbolism that's in the system, and it'll just hold on to that for you. Um, and so anyway, so this kind of gives you a sense of a, a way to have your symbols, to do research on each of them, to take your own notes about it. And it's a way of just working with that particular symbol and working with that particular dream uh, overall. Now, some other basic things about dream work um, are, you know, what's the context? What happened yesterday? You now, was there something really important that happened at work? Or did you have a big fight with your girlfriend or boyfriend or, you know, something or other that might have triggered this kind of a seal dream? Mm -hmm. You know, just more hints about how do I, you know, interpret this? How do I peel back the layers on this dream? Um, you can create many other kind of notes as well. Um, one of those premium features that we had talked about before mm -hmm. is now you can add your own uh, pictures or videos and associate them with this dream. So one of the things that I do in that respect is every now and then I'll have a dream that's kind of complicated or, or I'll see a building or a shape or something or other. And, and I want, you know, I, I want to get it in here. So I might sketch it out, take a picture of it and then upload it as uh, you know, as an image associated with this particular dream. Does that make any sense or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and then uh, down here, you can also see export to PDF. So you can easily go and say, all right, I'm going to export this dream. Um, you can uh, create um, images using artificial intelligence based on the dream. Um, that yeah, that, that's huge here. That's a huge yeah. part of this app I saw on your Instagram. And I'll have links in the description of this video to all of your accounts. You're on Twitter, you're on Instagram, and you have a website. Temno Stream has its own website, and also you have an email for feedback. So I don't, um, I don't want to forget that we're going to add that to the description after. That's great. So the AI. Yeah. So um, it, you know, there's a lot of new stuff happening with artificial intelligence yeah. these days, and one of the things that it can do is you can ask an artificial intelligence sort of engine to create um, uh, a, an image for you, which I think is pretty kind of perfect for dreams, you know, because something came out of your own unconscious. Let's ask this artificial intelligence, okay, have a shot at drawing this, at painting this, at making a photo of this and see what happens. Um, so what, what is it going to base it on? Right. It bases it on a prompt. Um, and so that's the step one part. And you can actually ask 
the AI to create a prompt for you. Because if, for example, you've got a really long dream, mm -hmm. you can ask one AI, hey, summarize my dream for me. And you can say, generate a prompt. And then because security is super important to us, anytime any bit of your dream you know, leaves your phone, mm -hmm. um, you know, for example, goes to the open AI in this case, we warn you and say, okay, are you sure this is okay? So we go ahead and say, all right, let's go ahead and do that. All what right. is the open AI? Open AI is one of many um, uh, artificial intelligence engines that are out there. It's probably the biggest, most advanced one right now. Okay. Um, uh, and anybody who kind of plays in this field knows open AI. It's kind of the, in a way, it's sort of the Microsoft of AI. Um, and so it just summarized the, uh, the, the dream Alaskan boat with a seal. And then it says, why don't we choose the, the style surrealism? And then we scroll down and say, okay, now generate an image. And in this case, we're using a different AI system one that's uh, kind of through something called Dream Studio, but in the background, it's something called Stable Diffusion. And then we say, okay, go ahead and do that. Uh, and it comes up with an image. Okay, so uh, I don't see a seal, but we do have the Alaskan fishing boat. Um, uh, and so I'm gonna say, let's do that again. Let's see what else you got in there. Um, so it's looking for keywords yeah, exactly. It's looking for keywords and then it just kind of invents <laughs> various things. So this is, you know, this is a seal as an Alaskan fishing. Ah. Boat. So it's, it, you know, that's with the surrealism. So mm -hmm. I get that. Um, uh, you can also kind of go in and say, um, for example, uh, you can say uh, in the style of Van Gogh mm -hmm. uh, and then ask it to generate one. And I find that to be kind of fun because Van Gogh has a bit of a dreamy look to it in my, for me. And so, ah, there. Mm. We go. Now let's tell the viewers why this is important. Uh, viewers, listeners who have not worked with their dreams with an analyst. Analysts, young, like images, right? So this is what we're doing. And our analysts, typically encourage us uh, if we're struggling to understand a dream or if we're really working intensively with a dream, uh, we work with the images. And so I was frequently, uh, I don't know if frequently is the correct word here, uh, encouraged to paint or draw some of the images from my dreams. And I'm not artistic. It was very difficult for me, um, but it was important and I did it uh, and I don't do it anymore. And so now that we have computers and the thing, this ability, like the ability to record the dream with your voice instead of writing it, um, this, what, I don't, I don't know how I feel about this. What, yeah. What's been your experience with if you were to draw or paint the images from your dream versus having the AI do it for you? What's been your experience? Um, my experience is it's better to do it yourself every single time. It's okay. always better to do it yourself. Okay. Because you want to rely on your own natural imagination more so than something from somewhere else. Um, but the thing that I find is... I'm running around all day. You know, I've got, I've got 10 minutes. I'm going to work on my dream in this little 10 minute space. Yeah. And I want to kind of just play with it and see yeah. what this thing thinks, see what yeah. active imagine or <laughs> not active imagination, so <laughs> see what artificial intelligence comes up with. Um, and then see if that kind of bumps me into a slightly different way of thinking about my dream. Sure. A new way of thinking about yeah. it, which, um, which I do think, you know, people may say, well, that's the wrong direction. You don't want to, you know, you don't want outside influence. Um, but I do think that there is a bit of a gift in the wrong answer sometimes. Yes, um, I agree. There's this, there's this old story, um, uh, maybe it's apocryphal, but I, I heard of it, 
um, that when Jung himself went to analyze his own dreams, mm -hmm. that rather than go to Marie Louise von Franz or his or, or Tony Wolf or the people who were really closest to him and most trained in dream analysis, yeah, he would take really puzzling dreams and he would explain them to his gardener. His gardener had no formal education, certainly had no uh, background in dream analysis. But by virtue of the fact that the gardener came back with uh, an, uh, an interpretation that wasn't Jung's, mm -hmm. you know, he saw things in a way that wasn't the way that Jung saw things, that allowed Jung to kind of see around corners, see around his own blind spot and often yeah. would get him bumped into, oh, all right, it's this or it's that. Um, and I think this is useful in that sense. I think it's sort of a weird prompt of like, wow, that's not right. Yeah. It's more like this. Right. Kind of mm. just an, another way of playing with the dream. And I think that's the most important part, really. Yeah. Is just to play with your own un unconscious, to engage with your own unconscious, to have... Um, to develop a relationship with your own unconscious. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, the most important part about the whole app, about the whole thing. About the whole thing. I love that story because uh, it illustrates to me why we, I don't think we can interpret our own dreams uh, because our dreams are showing us that you talk about this in your product demo. You have a YouTube channel too. And there are two really great videos on there about one is a, a kind of a product demo and the other one's a, a quick start guide. Mm -hmm. And you quote von Franz saying that, what, tell, tell us what she said. Sure. Um, uh, uh, Marie Louise von Franz, who is a, um, uh, probably the number one acolyte of Jung's and who right. I think world of absolutely amazing yeah um she said dream the uh I, I don't know it exactly but she basically said dreams don't waste a lot of spit telling you what you already know yeah and that's sort of one of the most challenging things about dreams like the biggest mistake you can make to a dream is to try and assimilate that um uh assimilate that dream into a conscious attitude that you already have. Right. Like, oh, I know what that means. That's I'm stressed about this and that's why I'm dreaming exactly like that. Yeah. You know, von Franz would say that's not really it. You're missing right. it. You're missing right. the point. Um, and so, yeah. So I think that that stuff is vital because we all have these, it's the definition of the unconscious, right? It's what you are not consciously aware of. Um, and dreams being so, focused on sort of compensating your conscious attitude yeah. and trying to say, Hey, you know, you always think about things in this way. You're completely missing the boat over here. Um, and, but that's really hard to see because it's sort of, but that's how, that's how you kind of become, I guess, more individuated, more a whole person is to try and understand that those sides of yourself that are undeveloped that are sort of unnatural, that aren't your go-to things. Mm -hmm. And I just adore dreams for that. Mm -hmm. uh, explore, work mm -hmm. with stuff. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the sharing that you mentioned. Uh, sure. If you do create a profile uh, on the app, uh, you can include as much or as little information about yourself as you'd like. Uh, there are a lot of different sections. I don't know if you want to bring that up on your phone, if we can share that uh, oh, no to problem. show. And then you can friend. Yeah. Let me know when it's up and I'll add it. Go ahead. Time to add it. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. There we go. Great. Um, yeah. So one of the things you can do with your friend or with your dream is, you know, I really like sharing my dreams with a few people that I know love talking about dreams and who know me pretty well. Um, and so what I can do is I can go down to the share bit at the bottom and I can go press on that and it says, who do you want to share it with? So you can, I can take this dream and I can make it public so that anybody on the, on the system can see it. 
Um, I can share it with just people that I've sort of identified as friends or friended, like on any social app um, in here, other users that I've friended. I can share it with a specific individual and say, okay, I want to share it with that person or that person and that person. Um, and, uh, and then have kind of discussions about it from that standpoint. So, so let me just jump in. I want to, I want to back up because, um, where, where this starts is with you creating a profile, which we haven't really covered. Right. Um, and so you have to do that first. You have to create your profile and then you can connect with other people, right? Exactly. That you can, you can. Uh, send friend requests. Right. Um, you can send friend requests. You can share dreams. You can comment on their dreams. They can comment on your dreams. You can have direct messages back and forth, all that stuff. So for me, I've got my own uh, profile in here. And so you can fill out as much or as little as you want. As much or as little. Okay. Yeah, exactly. The The only things that, that get required are, um, as I'd mentioned, uh, 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 an email address. And then mm -hmm. you've got to choose some sort of name uh, to, rec to be recognized by, and you can make it anything you want. So you can still participate sharing dreams and call yourself, uh, you know, young junior, if you okay. want to. Okay. Right? Um, uh, so we, we're very big on enabling anonymity in the whole system. It's, it's very, very important. Um, so, so once what, you have your profile, Exactly. And Once you, and you, you can connect a uh, friend, other people, then you can decide if you want to keep your dreams and each dream, it doesn't have to be all the dreams. Exactly. If you want to keep them private, share them with friends only or make them public. Exactly. And back to kind of where we had talked about at the beginning, you can see this office buildings of a huge company. That's a dream that I don't want to share with anybody. Um, another one, Jordan Peterson and a pancake. You know, I don't want to share that one or a lazy mechanic. Alien executions, but barefoot in a war zone, I did share with people. In fact, I made that one sort of public. Okay. So then what happens to a dream that is public or shared? Sure. What does that, that look goes like? down into this bottom left little tab that says shared. And if you go and click on that, then you can see all the dreams that people have shared that you have access to. Um, so this one on the top, um, black and red prison, um, that one is shared by someone publicly because it doesn't have a, I know that because it doesn't have a little emblem next to it. Okay. Um, lost Monet during a war. I know that one uh, happens to be one of mine, has shared with friends. But so you can kind of look through dreams and then you can also tell, okay, on the lost Monet dream, I can tell that four people have taken a look at that dream. Oops, mm -hmm. wrong thing. Uh, oh, my, the number count is not quite right. I can see who looked at my dream. Okay. Um, and then you can also go and see how many comments are on the dream as well. So people can make comments on your dream and they would, what, what's, hmm, what's to comment on what, how they would interpret it? Yeah, exactly. So it's, um, uh, you know, you might go in to, um, let's see if we can think of a good, oh, <laughs> this one's sort of amusing. Um, oh, and I put just to put a photo of my dogs in the stream for fun. Mm -hmm. um, I had this one dream uh, about, you know, standing in a line in the snow and shaking my booty for some reason. I don't know why. Um, and then people say, okay, well, here's a, um, here's what I think about. No, I it. think I read that dream. Oh, I be. remember that. Yeah. Um, uh, and then others, you know, also commenting on, on it, people saying, Hey, you should go and stand up now. I, you know, I dare you to go shake your booty, <laughs> particularly if you're in public. And so I was like, oh, well I did, but only my dog saw it. So I just can, it, it's like a little bit of a social thing and just be like, okay, here's, you know, something kind of fun and amusing and light, um, you know, with more intense dreams and more personal dreams, um, you know, among close friends, you know, then you kind of have a little bit more um, in-depth comments, but it's just up to you, it's, uh, you know, how you want to talk with your friends. So I, I think that there's pros and cons to this and anything, I'm to the point now where I, 
I, I see it as any way of getting that image out there. And even if somebody makes a silly comment or something that isn't insightful or something that's way off, it still gets you thinking about it. It gets it churned up in your psyche and it gets you to interact with those images. And so I see a lot of value in that. Um, now, bringing in someone else's psyche, right? that might not be what we're looking for here, but anything that's going to get us working with these images, I'm all for. Yeah. And that's kind of my position too, because there's a lot of, I mean, there's an argument, okay, well, you've got the blind leading the blind because this isn't a bunch of trained, you know, Jungian analysts who are commenting back and forth and mm -hmm. everybody's going to bring right. their own projections and it's going to be all yeah. kind of goofy, but you know, uh, I, I, those things being said, I still, I agree with you in that any degree to which we can encourage people to work with their dreams, mm -hmm. play with that space to like Jung used to say, used to talk about working with the unconscious and dreams. He used to say, it's like, it's like trying to develop a relationship with the 2 million year old man, this sort of old, ancient, ancient, uh, knowledge, knowing inside. Yeah. inside that the archetypes come out of and and the images and the symbols come from to develop a relationship with that takes a lifetime yeah but you know rather than picking up my phone and f flitting through twitter and all the craziness that's out there yeah i'm gonna go and look at my dreams and what people think about those and i'm gonna look at my friend's dreams yeah we're going to kind of just talk about that. And I think that's worthwhile. I think I that's, do too. I like that. So I do too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, going in, these aren't analysts. Th these are just ways for you to bring what's inside of you outside of you. So you can take a look at it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, and I'd say choose, you know, choose the people that you friend on there right. carefully. Be very careful about who you share dreams with. Yes. One thing that I haven't emphasized enough so far, which mm -hmm. is absolutely crucial, is um, the security on here. Right. Right. All Let's of talk your about dreams, that. Yeah. All of your dreams are, uh, are encrypted. Um, we can't look at them. The, the and nobody else can look at them unless you give someone permission to look at those dreams. Mm -hmm. um, when you share them, then they get unencrypted for that other person, but that's okay. it. On your phone, um, this uh, you, when you don't have a profile, like we said, you can just start and don't have a profile. Yeah. Then your dreams are on your phone. They're only on your phone. They don't go anywhere else. They don't go to the cloud, nothing. Um, so they're as secure as your phone is. The downside of that is if you lose your phone, you lose your dreams. Okay. If you create a profile, then we take the dreams and we back them all up in the cloud, fully encrypted. Your cloud. Y yes, our cloud. So our servers, fully encrypted. Uh, and if you ever lose your phone or change phones or anything like that, mm -hmm. you can just log back into yeah. your account and it will decrypt them again for you and you'll have them. Um, but, but we think that's crucially important. Um, also the, the most of the kind of free apps out there are based on, Hey, the app is free, but we're going to take all of your information and sell it to advertisers. Right. Right. We don't do any of that. That's absolutely against our our entire philosophy of this whole thing. I mean, these okay. are dreams. That's why we call it Temenos. Temenos, mm -hmm. sacred space. Yes, I meant to ask you about that. Yeah, yeah. and uh, old Greek thing. Jung talked about it as well. Yeah, um, and just a, a, a we want this to be a sacred space to be able to work with dreams, and so we're not selling anybody's information. We're making sure it's encrypted and super secure. Um, and, and make sure we've got kind of rules about, all right, if you want to share your dream, here's how, you know, and, okay. and we always remind you, okay, this one's going to be shared. Are you sure you want to share it mm -hmm. um, so that nobody accidentally shares dreams, mm -hmm. you know, that they don't want to. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, that's just kind of a little bit about our, our, our security. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, we're coming up on about an hour here and I was wondering, uh, if, is there anything we haven't covered? 
Um, let's see. I'm sure that there's, oh, I know there is one thing yeah. that I have to cover. Um, uh, and maybe it's, maybe it's minor, but, um, mm -hmm. uh, but one of the goals of the app is to try and help people um, uh, work with their dreams and interpret their dreams. There are, you know, at least a dozen um, uh, what I call frameworks or ways to kind of look at, interpret your dream that we include in the app as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I noticed that. Uh, so if, if you want to kind of switch it back on again for a sure. second, I'll, I'll take us a little bit through that. So if we have a particular dream, let's say we're in that seal dream again, um, down here at the bottom right, you can see it says frameworks. So right. Mm -hmm. Click into a framework. And these are all ways of analyzing a dream or looking at and working with elements of the dream that have been suggested by uh, Robert Johnson, by Von Franz, by Jung, um, uh, by, uh, by Hall, um, different kind of ways of understanding it. So one of them, uh, new knowledge is an example. So this is basically the Von Franz prompt to say, okay, take notes in here about what is it that you know now from this dream that you didn't know before. And so it's just a way of prompting you to kind of write down some notes about what you think might be mm. coming from that. Yeah. Um, uh, attitude. Another one, this is dreams compensate a conscious attitude. Yeah. Something from the unconscious. It's just a way to prompt you to say, look at this dream and what do you think it's prompting you towards in terms of attitude shift? And so you can kind of take notes here. Um, uh, if you have a nightmare, um, one common way of understanding nightmares is that your psyche is trying to get something through to you and you're not listening. Yeah. And so now it's going to start screaming yeah. <laughs> because it wants to, to shake you until yeah. you hear that. So if you have a nightmare, what do you think it is? What might be trying to get through from your psyche that you're not letting through? Mm -hmm. And all these questions are ridiculously difficult to answer because they're unconscious. They're working with your unconscious. But Great point. these are just kind of, uh, you know, you can kind of go through them and say, all right, Today, I'm going to look at the, the nightmare prompt for that particular dream. Tomorrow, I'm going to look at the, you know, the bring it to life. Um, uh, this is one, I think, that comes out of Lockhart, um, which is dreams want to be in the world. They want to be real in the world. Um, and so what happened in the dream and what way can you bring some element of the dream to life? Yeah, this is great. So just different ways, because there are so many ways of working with dreams and mm -hmm. so of interpreting them, um, uh, that, that it's just different prompts all along the line. Um, what, one of my favorites is if you have one symbol that's really hard to understand and just, but seems really big, um, there's a kind of walls of Jericho uh, approach. And this is from uh, Robert Johnson and his book, Inner Work. Mm. Um, uh, and in this, it says, you can take the practice, the, the biblical practice of the walls of Jericho, which was they walked around the city of Jericho for six days, uh, once a day for six days. And then on the seventh day, they blew their horns and the walls came down. So this one says, take the symbol, spend 10 minutes every day for six days to meditate on it, and then take notes on what comes out of that each day. Uh, and then on the seventh day, see what happens. And so mm. it set reminders for you and it'll prompt you every day. Oh, so wow. To go and kind of think about, you know, think about that symbol. That's so great. Like, just little nudges. Yep. Keep thinking about these dreams and these symbols and, and that stuff. So um, anyway, so that's the scoop. That's kind of a, a great overview. So. Um, I, I really appreciate your, your having me and letting me yeah. talk about all this stuff. Cause I, I love it. Yeah. It's yeah. fun. It's fun stuff. Well, um, you've put a lot of time and energy and work and thought into this and it shows. And I'd like to encourage everybody to go to the, um, the app store 
on your iPhone, your iPad, and type in Temino Stream. And I will provide links as I usually do. I'm not going to do huge extensive show notes uh, for yep. these Speaking with Laura uh, episodes. These will only be available on YouTube here uh, as video interviews. Um, there, there won't be an audio download on the website. Um, so we will put, John, I'll put whatever links you'd right. like in the description uh, on this video. And if anybody has any questions, where can they contact you or how can they contact you? Um, uh, let's see. Best would be um, feedback at temenostream.com. And that's okay. T-E-M-E-N-O-S dream.com. Okay. And I'll put that email address in the description. Um, this uh, this is the, the way I'm doing this is still new. We're recording it. Uh, in the morning on Monday, December 12th. I should have said that in the opening. And then I will edit a couple of flubs that I made in the intro. And then I will upload this to my YouTube channel, Jungian and Laura, where all the episodes of Speaking of Jung are. And John, I want to thank you so much for being my first guest. I've been wanting to do this for years, actually. And um, I, I, can't, I can't think of a better way uh, to launch this. So I really appreciate your time and uh, all that you've shared with us here today. Thank you. It's been a pleasure and an honor and uh, it's really great talking with you. Thank you, Laura. Thanks again.